everyone. Welcome to the Honduras edition of GB International Development 101. I'm your host, Tess Niehoff. I'm the program manager of the E100 or the Empowered 100 uh, program. And here with me is Morgan. Morgan, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, my name is Morgan Siraki. I'm currently working as a program associate for Global Brigades. I work with volunteers and in-country local teams to coordinate and prepare volunteers for their brigade. So today we're here with David. David, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, my name is David Damodov. I'm from Honduras. I'm working from uh, GV since 2017 and the position the economic development manager. Great. So if you guys are here for a business brigade, David is your man. Morgan, do you want to get us going with some questions? Sure. David, could you tell us about historical events in Honduras that have, may have affected the development of the country up to today? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Well, um, probably one of the things we had to start saying that Honduras is probably one of the poorest countries in the world, especially in Latin America. In 1988, we got a, a huge event. It was a hurricane meet. Uh, this hurricane uh, basically crushed the country in many ways, infrastructure, agriculture, economical health. Since that, uh, Honduras started receiving many development agencies in the country. Today, we have, the, with the COVID-19, uh, as, as you guys know, around the world, we have many issues, especially in, in the development sector. But at the same time, I think it's a great opportunity to improve many things, especially in rural communities like in Honduras. Because when we start thinking about how the, the rural communities can improve in, in terms of the economic development, is how they, for example, start more knowledge about growing harvesting season. Right now, May 5th is when it start raining in Honduras. One of the things we start doing it with these people is trying to give them some advice in terms of how they can be more efficient and how the harvesting is going to be much better for them in terms of the harvest and how they can start doing some uh, collateral business with the harvesting, like grain silage, for example. Many of the communities that we've been working, they before just harvesting, but they never thinking about storage grain which right now is one of the things that, especially in this country, needs to be improved because it's a lack of food, especially like grains. The main dishes in, in, in these countries are rice, red beans, corn. I think it's one of the, the great opportunities to give them advice about how they can start improve another business that just harvesting is like storage grains. Another thing is that how these people start working together as a community. The impact that GV started doing it for many years, working with the health system in the community, with the watch system in the community, and the economic development. This is the thing that we call holistic model. Since the COVID-19 started impacting Honduras, this community station start working together and they trying in each of these organizations, they try to do the best and they call up and we give them advice, for example, how the community bank can buy, for example, like corn or red beans to another community and bring it to the community and they can give them some right price to another community member. Or, for example, how the community health workers are calling to TV in Honduras and how they can trying to know what is the main things that COVID-19 starts doing and affecting people in the community. Right now, as we know, no one in the communities that TV is working in Honduras is affected by COVID-19, which is a good thing because, like I said, these people is working in, in advance together and trying to get knowledge how to manage this health problem uh, right now. Great. It was quite the uh, answer full of history. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, thank sure. you for that. Uh, the next question we wanted to ask you, how do you think these historical events have impacted the development of the country today? I know you touched on that a little bit. Did you want to add any other aspects? 
Oh yeah. Well, one of the things that is impact in is education, for example, logistics. Uh, but at the same time, we start seeing how technology is improving. For example, many people in the community now is not just using a call. They, they, they start calling by video conference. I just hang out for a community bank called El Espinito, which is one of the bigger community banks we have in Honduras. We try to help them and give them advice because they want to, to see if they can get more corn and red beans for another community. And the good thing is they are in, in the meeting for the board. It's almost 10 people. And they call me, the surprise for me is not the regular call. They call me like a video conference. It's that kind of things you probably think about how the community members start using the technology in better way, you know, because in that way we can, like the organization, we can try to help them, I think, more efficient. Because when you start seeing people in video conference, I believe it's like, it's not like a, you are in touch, you know, like face to face, but it feels like. And it's good to see the people that are smiling and say, hey, David, how we can try to do this? use and you feel in the call the motions you know when told me and it was good call it was quick call 10 minutes just they want to on the goal they they want to do and they asked me two three things and i told them okay i think this is the better way uh, at the end is the decision to them to make it but it's good to know that they, they start using the technology and this is part of the education that we can try to probably improve more in this community you know we are in a different world right now the technology is more used in a better way and we can try to impact this community with this technology thank you for that that is really neat to see how things are progressing what are the largest areas of development in honduras that have advanced in the last five years well it's a good question <laughs> But I would say that probably the help in the community, in rural communities, more in advance, especially in the work that GB is doing it in another organization. Because when people get training, no matter which area, it's important that the follow-ups. Right now, we 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 know that these community health workers, which are volunteers from the community, are making in time a call with uh, Dr. Ajeni, which is the uh, doctor who management uh, health planning in Honduras. In my case, I received many calls with uh, the community bank members, the community boards, what else they can do for the community in the specific time. For example, I received a call last week that one of the community members won a small loan to help another family that they don't have income. And I say, do it. This is some kind of things that communities have to build. You know, we are organization that just help uh, improve lives in these communities. At the end, the community members are, if we empower, if we empower these uh, community members, it's going to be better for them. So right now we know that this, it was a pressure for a community bank to take a loan by himself and give them to another family to feed them. That is a great story that you can see and you can, when you know that kind of things, you do thinking about what else we can try to do, what else we can help them to improve their lives. And I believe it's like an organization, we can help them to be better for them too. Definitely, thank you for that. And to add on to that question, what are the largest areas of development in Honduras that you would like to see improved in the next five years? Well, I would say that health, first of all, our health system as a country is, is extremely weak, but at the same time, it's a great opportunity to improve. I would say that economic development is probably one of the another things. One of the things I all the time tell the community and members when I try to get there in the community is they need to think out of the box. The most important asset these people have is the land. And I all the time told them, if you have one acre in your back home, and for many years you've been doing it just corn, why you can divide and fork? That way you can have corn, you can have red beans, you can have plantains, and you can have 
rice, cassava, whatever. In that way, they can have four sources to feed themselves, or they can have four sources to go to the market and sell them. We have a lot of land that we can improve with these people. Obviously, we have to give them advice. We can give them some guidance about how they can be doing it. But at the same time, we can approach these people to the chain, to the market. In that way, they can have somebody to buy, but at the same time, they can have somebody to solve the, the harvest. I would say probably help, obviously, uh, economic development. And I think together they can do much better. I, I, I don't want to say that watch is not important. Yes, it's important. It's part of the help process. And all these things are in the same close by education. And I believe like uh, that all the programs that we do in, in place in Honduras, all the three are important in, in the component to education because we give them charlas, we give them uh, training. Many of the times when our consultants, especially in economic development, they point to, to the community, they all the time, these community members asking for something. They all the time that had questions, which is good. Because that means that the last visit, they keep in their mind something that they thinking, okay, next time, next week, or next time when the consulting, the economic development uh, coming, we have to ask. So I believe that the three areas are important and the three areas are working together, make a great impact. The three areas are important, and even if we are in advance a lot, we need to improve because, like I said, with this uh, with this event about the COVID-19, the change is completely different, and we had to see as soon as we going back to the field, what is the need for these people in terms of that in each of the problems. But I will say that we had a lot of windows for improve and help and improve the health and community health work and, and the economic development. This is a large improved kingdom that we have. I think one thing that you said, David, you know, early on in this interview, you talked a lot about, or a little bit about Hurricane Mitch and for students that might not be aware of that, when that hit in the late eighties, early nineties, that really changed the way that kind of development looked in Honduras throughout every sector, right? Through every portion of the economy really changed the way that the economy of Honduras worked. I think COVID might play a similar role and might have a similar result in that it might force adaptations that actually make medical more accessible to rural communities. So I think, you know, you're very right in that it'll, it'll be interesting to see where this takes us and where hopefully the opportunities that this challenge presents. Yeah, sure. Every big event, especially in development countries, is you feel like a, it's, it's probably 20, 20 times worse than in, you know, in advanced countries. For example, one of the things we see is uh, right now, especially in the big cities, is a lot of people is going to the streets and not the doors for another people to try to get food, you know. And I, I don't think you don't see this in the States, for example, or Europe. If, uh, at least one day of the week, I receive at least one or two people that, hey, I don't have a job. You have something that I can give to my family. Obviously, you know, uh, I have and I give it to them. But at the same time, I received, uh, for example, another guy three weeks ago, and he told me, okay, listen, I produce beets, I produce uh, carrots, I produce uh, like blueberries. Listen, I don't have a job. I just have this. Do you want to buy it? And I say, do you produce? Yes, okay. I can buy it for you every week. But if you promise that you come here and the money I give it to you, it's not going to spend more in another thing that you need to feed your family, you know. The good thing in this, in this process with him is actually he came today. And the good thing, this is the three weeks straight that he coming and start selling another house around my home. The good thing is keep thinking out of the box. You don't expect to wait for help. You don't expect to sit in your home and say what I can do. 
he got acid in his, in his hand the produce that he has in the backlog. This is the kind of thing that if we got more education in trying to impact more in the communities, for example, we can be, we can help it to be better in terms that no waiting for the, for the government, no waiting for somebody else, you know, trying to improve by themselves their, their lives. That's great. Thank you. The last thing I wanted to ask was kind of, and we've talked about this throughout, but what thoughts do you have about Global Brigade's role in development in Honduras? Before I start working for GB, I have a long experience, especially in the private sector, financial sector, banking, even uh, government. I've got experience working even in the United States for almost eight years in Illinois State in the private sector. When I start working for GB, one of the things that made me the impact that organization was doing it is when I went to the medical brigade. The first day when just walking into the community it was probably 8.30 night in the morning. And the big surprise for me is see almost 150 people in line. And I asked Dr. Jenny about if this is happening all the time. And she told me, David, this is just the beginning. Every day we can attend at least 300 people. That made me shocked because when you work in private sector, especially in huge offices with air conditioning, you can see what is the needs you know that people have. So that made me thinking, okay, this is probably the correct place that I have to work right now. One year ago, I visited a community called El Respaloso, got a meeting with the board. And for me, what's interesting in the, the, the one of the, the members, it wasn't a member, it was a, a kid, a song for the treasure. He was in the, in the meeting. He just listened, and when the meeting was over, the treasurer, her name is Doña Blanca, she told me, David, uh, I'm going to the Nahome market. And then I give it a ride to her. She prepared extremely good tamale, and then like a pound cake. And then the kid come with her. And the good thing is, I, I asked him, what's his name? His name was Roberto. He was 11 years old. And I told him, why are you coming with your mom? Because I want to learn how to make business. A kid for 11 years. That's amazing for me. And then we walk into this market. I helped them because you know, Lanka made like 250 tamales and like 100 pumpkins. And then I asked again to Roberto, what is the best lesson you, you have coming with your mom every two, three days to this market? He was uh, smiling. And he just told me how to negotiate. How? Oh, I said, what? How is possible? Yeah. If you come in and trying to buy three tamales, a two pound cake, I can give you either better price if you ask me for better price, or I can charge you more if you don't ask me. And you believe a kid for 11 years give that kind of answer? is impact because that means that that lady, which is a treasure for a community bank, but at the same time, she got a business, small business, and bring to his son. And he was in, in one hour in the meeting hearing about how we can improve the lives and through the Caja, how, for example, if somebody wants a loan for buying a cow, but it's not just buying the cow, how we can give them advice about, okay, you can buy a cow, but at the same time, you can have the milk and you can make a product from the milk, like cheese, like sour cream. You know, it's that kind of things we we trying to help them, the community banks members about that. It's not just give it on a loan at somebody. It's what else we can give them in terms of education, not just a loan, how this loan can make an impact in the same family, you know? I think that uh, the role the uh, Global Brigades has been doing for a long time, especially in Europe, is impacting too many people in many ways, health, uh, food, health, water, you know, and the Caja. I believe that every volunteer when becoming, no matter what country, it's important that 
let them know that the, the control should they have, they can give it to the TV. It's going to these community members, even by training, but water system, but public health, uh, capitalize the capacity. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that special story with us. I don't have any other questions for you today, but I do really want to thank you for your time and energy. I have really appreciated learning about this and understanding your perspective of it. I think in order to understand history, we have to understand how a nation came to be. And yeah, I want to thank Tess for facilitating this as well and thank our audience and listeners for joining today. We want to encourage you to keep learning more. And if you do have more questions or want to continue this conversation, feel free to reach out to your program associate or we have an administration email through the Global Brigade's website. Thank you again, and we wish you the best on the rest of your brigade planning process.